So OpenAI have finally released their search tool. And in today's online tutorial, I'll show you guys all the tips and tricks and all the ways that you can utilize this new feature so that you can get the very best out of ChatGPT's new search feature. So when you load up into ChatGPT, you'll see that there is this now blue icon here. If you click this, search the web icon, essentially what happens is it turns to blue. Now you'll see that immediately we can see that there are some other topics that appear below. These are essentially trends based on the recent search data. You can see we have Jeremy Clarkson, Tube Strikes 2024, Man United News and Carabao Cup Draw. These may vary based on your region, so my search trends probably won't look like yours. Now, of course, this essentially just means that now when you chat with ChatGPT, your responses are going to pull data from the web in real time. So if you're ever needing real time information that's up to date, this is the button that you click. Now, there are a variety of features that are really useful with this, and then I'll go over those. Now, for the basic feature, you can see here, we can just click one of these trends. And of course, you can see it's going to immediately search the internet and pull up the recent information. Now, once you conduct your first search, you'll be able to see that once the chat has finished, it gives us a variety of different sources. For example, if we actually scroll all the way up to the top, you'll see that whilst we are actually browsing the article slash chat GPT output, there are these small areas where things are highlighted. So essentially what this will do is if you have a very specific search, it will show you exactly where that piece of information has come from. So for example, for this paragraph, if I wanted to know where the majority of this information has come from, you can see it says something small here, the BBC, which is a reputable news source in the UK. You can see if I hover over that, it shows me that exact source. Now this is really good because this allows you to understand exactly where the fine links are with your sources. So you can see right here, this passage of information was linked from Wikipedia. And then this passage of information right here was linked from Sky News. So you can see every single paragraph has real time data. And you can also see exactly where that data came from. So if you're ever wondering, is that okay? Is this piece of information true? You could then think, hmm, maybe I don't trust the Metro or hmm, maybe I don't trust this website or this publication. So I can then look at this information and say to myself, maybe I need to A, double check that information or say, you know what? I know that that organization has been publishing false news. I'm probably not going to trust them. Of course, you could also go ahead and simply click onto any of these. It's going to take you right over to that web page, and that works for any of these links. Now, if we come down back to where we are, you can see that what it also shows us is the recent news on this particular figure. So this isn't actually a summary of information that was in the article, but right here, we get three recent pieces of data that are from the internet. This is really useful if you're looking for extra topics that allow you to browse even further about a specific query or search topic. So this is just information from the last three days, the last 29 days, but isn't general information included here. If we want the general information included here, we can go over to the sources tab. And this is where we can see all of the citations used every single citation from here. And then down here, we can also see additional search results that have just appeared. So these aren't citations, but if we scroll up to here, you can see that these are the actual citations where it's taken information from these articles. And if you want more browsing, you can just scroll down. And this is where you conduct extra browsing to go over to these articles to fact check what was said. Another feature of ChatGPT with web search that is actually really cool is that if you toggle web search on, it actually has a really cool feature that allows you to view the latest and greatest images. Recently, there was a car that is quite the favorite of mine that was released. But when I ask current AI models about it, they just can't show me pictures or don't know what I'm talking about. So I've entered this query, which is give me new images of the new McLaren W1. Now, if I click enter, you're going to see that it doesn't AI generate these images. It pulls them exactly right from the web. And then it shows me the latest and greatest images. Now, what's really cool about this is that if you're searching for something specific, you can click this little area right here and you do get these images in your own 
little gallery. So you don't have to browse for quite a long time, but you can view multiple different images. And just by using your arrow keys, you can browse between certain pictures. So this is something that is really effective for those of you that want real time images about something that is recently breaking news and you don't want to go over to another tab or another search engine. Of course, if you find an image that you do like, you can click the bottom right here. And then of course we can click once again and we can go over to where that image was initially sourced from. Something really, really useful. Now beyond basic capabilities, something that is really cool about ChatGPT is that this is a personal user interface, meaning that currently I'm signed in. This isn't an anonymous search browser. This is my own account that I'm using to search. So what that means is that I can do things that are really cool. So let me show you. So let's say, for example, I wanted to search about something that was rather recent. Let's say, for example, I wanted to search about Boston Dynamics new recent robot. You can see here, I can say, what demo did Boston Dynamics recently do with Atlas? Once I press enter right here, it's going to give me some pieces of information. Now, currently it looks like it's giving me two responses here. This often happens sometimes where you are getting information that is quite different. You can see I click this, you know, this response here that I prefer. And then I can say, OK, help me create a video around this. Topic. So now I can say brainstorm some ideas with me. OK, so you can see right here that it's able to now use that additional context from what we just had on a search and then use that to now build our content strategy. For those of you that are using ChatGPT to do some content strategies, this is going to be an absolute game changer because we've already searched for exactly what we wanted. We already have the data in our context window. This means that we can use this data that we've searched and then talk with that to develop custom content plans. This is really effective and it allows us to become more streamlined in our entire process. No more switching from tab to tab, just one area that you can curate and create your content. You can see that it's able to give me all of these. I can say, create me a short TikTok script about this new robot and make it as engaging as possible. So now rather than searching around for a million different things, you can see that I've been able to get this entire script done from recent search data. So this is something that is going to really be effective for those of you that are content creators out there. Another thing that ChatGPT with search actually has is the ability to search for certain things in your city. So let's say I wanted to eat some Indian food in my local area. I could enter a search. What are the best Indian spots in London near Soho? And then once I click enter, you're about to see it does the magic. It's able to search the web filter out the results. And then what it's going to do is it's going to show me on the maps exactly where these food areas are located. I really do like the clean UI that it does have. And you can see here that if I zoom in, I can see that in this area called Soho, I can view the top rated Indian restaurant. You can see that this one right here is, you know, two dollar signs expensive. It's a 9.1 star. Of course, I can go ahead now and view that one. I can go ahead and swipe from left to right to see which ones that I do want. And of course, with this, I can see exactly how close it is to certain locations. So for example, I can see this one. Okay, this looks really cool. I can swipe right here. I can swipe. I can click on their website. I can see which resource this was from. This is really cool. And this is just basically going to make searching for information really, really quick. Now, of course, there are three buttons that you can click. You can click directions, which is going to immediately open up the Google Maps and it's going to take your current location and plot it right to this place. This is a really useful feature that's integrated with Google Maps. I'm not going to click this now because I don't want to show you guys all where I currently am, but you can also click their website or call them and it's going to open up a different app. Now, of course, if you want a different way to view the data, you can click list and then you can see that it goes into a list format if that might be useful for you. So that way you can see them all from number one all the way to number nine. And of course, if you click these sources, you can see exactly where all of these sources came from. Another area where you can utilize the real time data is, for example, I can say what is the weather like in London okay I can say what is the weather in like in London today and then of course it's going to grab that real-time data and it's going to tell me exactly what the current weather is like of course as always you can always check your sources 
and I can also follow up and I can say, you know what, what about this week? And of course, it's going to show me the entire week. So if you want a visual diagram that's a lot more user friendly, you can just ask for the weather this week and you can see it's going to give you the entire forecast for this week based on your current area. Another area where real-time search is really useful is for gathering stock price data. So I can say, what is the latest price of Nvidia? And it's going to be able to go ahead and show me exactly what the latest price is. Now, this is really cool because it gives me a real-time graph where I can actually see the price move up and down within the latest trading day. So we get this nice user interface area where we can see the prices go up and down. We can also change this to many different timeframes, the five day, the one month, the six month, the year to date, and pretty much whatever value you want. And you can see exactly how much the price has changed based on this area. Now, of course, with this, what we can do is we can also talk and respond to certain things. For example, we can do this and say, okay, why is this? Because it says additionally, Nvidia stock has been influenced by mixed signals from recent earning reports. So I could hover on this and I could say, click these two buttons right here. And I could say, what do you mean? Why would this happen? So if there's something that you don't understand, you could then interact once again within that context. And you could see right there, it's giving me explanations for why there were mixed signals about the stock price. This is something that is really useful. So if you ever want to check a stock price really quickly, this is one of the easiest ways to do that, especially if you want to talk about something as well. Now, another cheeky little tactic that you can do that makes search GPT really cool is that if you want to find data and then put that data immediately into a table, that is something that search GPT can do extraordinarily well. So for example, I could say, give me all the recent chip stocks that moved today and I put enter, you're about to see that it's going to firstly search the web for every single AI chip stock. Then it's going to get all of that information and then it's going to put that in this kind of data. Depending on how you search, you could say put this into a table and then you're about to see that all of this data is quickly formatted. Of course, in my initial prompt, I could have said put this all into a data table, but you can see right here that this is something that is able to organize real time data relatively quickly for you for various different use cases. And if I search this same thing again, you can see it's able to give me a complete different table here that's really formatted well, something that's going to save you hours and hours of time if you're trying to organize the news in a way that is useful to you. So that covers the secret tips and tricks for search GPT. If there's any secret tips and tricks that you have, leave them down in the comment section below, share them with each other, and hopefully everyone can benefit. Peace.